Hey, this is Bing from Wonder Bing Travel. Welcome to my channel where I talk about all things solo road tripping, equipping, and inspire you to take off on your own journeys of freedom and wonder. And today's topic is navigation, specifically helping you build the best road trip for you. Point A, B, C, and back, all the places that you're going to go. Now, this is the summer of wonder and I'm doing a series, this is week four, where I am walking you through step by step all the things that you'll need to know to get ready for a road trip and then take one. So to do this, I'm using my number one best-selling book, There's Wonder Around the Bend, and pulling out all of the best stuff in here to equip and inspire and walk you through creating and then taking your own solo road trip. And the best way to teach you to do that is to model my solo road trip. So this summer, I am getting ready to embark on a month-long epic trip from central Pennsylvania to the Rockies and back. So each week leading up to this, I am sharing what I'm doing to get ready for my trip and then you can use these same tools and tricks and tips to get ready for your solo road trip. If you haven't bought the book yet, you can find it on Amazon, of course. It comes in a hardcover like this. It also comes as a paperback and a Kindle. So please grab your book so that you can follow along and really get into the nitty gritty of everything. Plus there's amazing resources. Those resources are not in the book, but they come free with the purchase of the book. And they are lifetime access to all kinds of additional things some of which we will be referring to today. So let's dive in and talk about navigation. Okay, so look, I know that this is one of the key spots where overwhelm can set in for people who are like, yes, I wanna take a solo road trip and I'm super excited about it. And then they have all these ideas, but then you think about navigating it and actually figuring out how long it's gonna take, how much you're gonna do every day, how do I not overdo it, all of those things, and it gets a little bit overwhelming. Plus you add the whole concept of maps in there and you either love it or hate it right there. So we're gonna talk through some of those things today and help you develop a plan, and I'm going to share my plan with you. So by the end of this video, I promise that you're going to have enough information and hopefully feel excited about kind of chunking out your own road trip, figuring out how many days you're gonna be gone, about how many miles you're gonna cover, those basic things that then you can start filling in all the really fun parts. And I'm so excited every year to fill in all the fun parts, but I have some work to do on my own road trip first before I can do that. And that's what we're talking about today. I'm not about just a to-do list. I'm much more about seeking wonder and freedom as you travel and slowing down and opening your eyes and looking out instead of in and just letting that be transformative in your life. While there are things you need to do in order to create less anxiety, to improve anticipation and bring joy and all of those things, but that's not the overall mentality here. The mentality here is to be able to relax and enjoy slow travel and to seek freedom and wonder on your own time, in your own way, because you get to make all the decisions. So this is actually going to be a two-part video. The first part here is going to be more uh, big picture, looking at the maps, figuring out where I'm going, kind of explaining to you so far how I have chunked out my my road trip. And then the second video, we're going to pull out Google Maps and I'm going to do a tutorial and show you how I'm actually going to put all that into one place so that I have it there for the road. So in the last few weeks, we have covered the building blocks of creating a treasure map, creating a budget, and also last week we talked about some of the gear that I bought for this year to really enhance this summer's road trip. So check those out in the Summer of Wonder playlist and you'll be all caught up. So how do you figure it all out? Well, first of all, let's start from the baseline of assuming that you have at least a general idea of how long your road trip is going to be. In other words, you know it's either going to be about three days, about a week, about two weeks, about a month, something like that. You have a general idea. So that, that's a really important starting place because it's a very different conversation if you're gone for a month than if you're gone for a weekend. So step one, figuring that part out about how long are you going to be gone. So assuming that you have a general idea of approximate time you're gonna be gone, and you have spent some time on a budget, then the next step is to just think about what destinations that you have in mind. And I say this because 
at least from my perspective and in my now pretty vast experience with road tripping, the most important thing to set me up for success after these other building blocks are done is having a destination of sorts. So for a trip like mine, which is going to be almost five weeks long, I definitely have some rest spots in mind. And actually I build my trip in some ways around these. I knew that I wanted to go west again this summer. That's sort of my go-to and unending exploration of things to see out there. It's just my sweet spot for sure. So I try to build a few places into that where I can rest for several days. Some place that I love, might be people that I love there, a place where I can just relax and I'm not driving every day. So that's important to me. And then the next piece of that is to figure out like how much time will I spend in each of those places. I am planning on being in Sheridan, Wyoming for five days. That's a destination for me. I have a friend there. We've been planning this for a long time and I will be in Sheridan, Wyoming for five days. Another place that I will definitely be spending a little time is in one of my favorite towns of all time and I feel like it's increasingly becoming a western home away from home and that's West Cliff, Colorado. It's just about this big but I just love it and I'm going to be doing a video devoted specifically to West Cliff later on in my travels. And the other thing that I know for sure is that my last destination is Breckenridge, Colorado where I will be spending five days with a bunch of my very closest college friends and we're having a big reunion. So that's a pretty exciting way to end my road trip although I will have a 25 hour drive home when it's all over. It'll be totally worth it. So when I add up those days, five days in Sheridan, three days in Westcliff, eh, and then five days to a week in Breckenridge, then that claims almost half of my trip. Not quite, but almost. All right, so we're gonna take a few minutes and we're gonna put this on a map so that you can see what that looks like. Okay, so as you can see on the map now, those are pretty centrally located places in the West. They're very far from home for me, but they are, you know, Colorado, Wyoming, I'm gonna spend some time in Montana, I hope too. Those places, while they're big states and there's a lot going on there, they're all, I look at that as sort of my destination area. Now, when I think about Sheridan, Westcliff, and Breckenridge, I, the next step is to think about, are these dates written in stone? So yes, in some cases, my Sheridan dates and my Breckenridge dates are in stone because that's what works for my friends and we planned these trips a long time ago. And so I know that those are anchors for me. That leaves me a pretty loose timeline for a lot of what happens in the middle, which is super exciting to me. And if you're going to follow along with my trip and I'm going to be vlogging and doing a lot of live videos, this will help you kind of know where I'm going and all of that. Here's how I'm looking at it. And know that I'm not just spouting this off the top of my head. I have put some time and thought into this, but the way I was able to do that was by knowing those destinations first and then backing out away. Like, how do I get to the first one? How do I get home from the last one? How much time is that going to take? And then what do I want to do with all the glorious time in the middle? I'm giving myself five days to get to Sheridan, Wyoming. So days one through five is me traveling. Now I should tell you, if I was doing it all at once, it's about a 24 hour drive but I'm not interested in doing that. I wanna see things along the way. So once I get to Sheridan, then I'm hunkered down there for days five through nine. So that's pretty fun and exciting for me. I know I'll be able to just rest, relax, grocery shop before I take off again, uh, refreeze things that maybe aren't frozen anymore, uh, maybe get a clean dog at some point along the way, and a clean me, which is a really good thing. You really do need to have some down days baked into your itinerary, especially in a longer one. So someplace where you can spend two nights in a row or three nights in a row where you're not driving every single day. From there then, I've got days nine to day 21. This is gonna be a long trip. But day nine to 21 with really no definitive place that I have to be. So I think that's amazing. That's two full weeks of just doing what I wanna do. And then, then I have to say that the end of a very long road trip is the least fun part 
except I always am very excited to get home at that point. But that long drive from Breckenridge back home, like I said, it's about 25 hours and I will do it over the span of two days. So I'm not one to drive 25 hours straight, but I will do 12 and 12 or 12 and 13 and get myself home that way. I also want to mention that part of nailing down my trip this summer has everything to do with the Summer of Wonder road trip being a bit of a book tour. So I'm working on doing events in Sheridan, in Westcliff, and in Breckenridge and nearby places to those because those are the places I'll be in for longer pauses. And if you live in any of those places or you frequent those areas and you have an awesome bookstore or a shop where you think, oh my gosh, this book, There's Wonder Around the Bend, would be perfect in this store, please leave me a comment. I would love to know so that I have some more places to reach out to. Okay, so we have some of the basics figured out now. I've shared my destinations. I've shared my approximate timeline with you all. So the next thing that really needs to get organized is what am I going to do with those first five days going to Sheridan, Wyoming? I don't want to be on the highways all the time and I definitely don't want to just be dreading counting hours down. I want to see things and explore and find the wonder around the bend. And you know what? There's not a lot of bends on a highway. So this next bit I'm going to share with you basically what I have decided to do or at least tentatively decided to do. And I'll put it on the map for you and that way we can look at it together. Okay, I'm psyched to say that I have figured it out at least tentatively. So I'm committed to driving a lot the first day because I don't really care where I am. I just want to get a bunch of it under my belt and I have explored a lot in this area. So I'm going to drive about seven and a half hours to get to the northeast corner of Indiana. Then I decided to just do the math to figure out, you know, how far it is from here to here and what are my different options. I chose a northern option because I really enjoy North Dakota northern Minnesota and Wisconsin. I'm adding a few hours onto my trip, but to me, that's totally worth it. Okay, I want to share one other thing with you, and that is how I move from the U.S. map to a state map. And I'm using a map of North Dakota here just as an example. As you can see, I'm a big fan of the Rand McNally state maps. I have not all of them, but an awful lot of them. When I'm trying to decide what I want to actually do, I have a plan about the approximate places that I'm going to stay, but what do I actually want to do on those drives? And so this is where I would, in part, pull out the state map and see my starting point and my ending point. I had noted Grand Forks, North Dakota, as a potential stopping place. Looks like a cool place. I've done a little bit of research online and I want to do some more. And then there's actually a state park over here where I've stayed before and it's maybe my favorite state park that I've ever stayed in. So North Dakota has surprised me in the past, so I think I'd like to go back and explore more. So what I do is I pull out the state map and then I can start to see, obviously, in way more detail what's going on. I'll go online and look at things and I also want to share a couple other resources that I use. So I'm a book girl, as you all probably know by now, and I've gotten a lot of mileage, no pun intended, out of these two particular books. One is a National Geographic product, the other one is Reader's Digest of all things. They're both beautiful books, this one especially is beautiful. It's broken up by states and it's some scenic drives around the U.S. So I love that you can look up a state that you're potentially going through and just find somebody else who's done some of the work for you to point out some of the more beautiful places along the way. Both of these books cover that same concept and they have different drives. They're not all the same, which is really cool. So I will use Google Maps to figure out a good bit of the rest of my trip, but I'm not ready yet. I know that my goal is to get to Sheridan in five days and so there's a time constraint to that and I need to figure that out effectively so that I don't get bogged down in too much uh, driving and that I just feel confident and comfortable with the plan that I set in place. Once I'm out at my dest first destination and then when I have two weeks to wander, then I can figure that out a little bit later. And, and for me, I don't really enjoy having 
a super tight schedule at that point I'm going to want to be able to just do what I want to do when I want to do it but that's what I'm comfortable with so make sure you check out the next video so that you can get the Google Maps tutorial and we're going to map out what we have figured out so far everything that we're talking about and so much more is found in my book there's wonder around the bend an inspiring guide to solo road tripping you can embark on a transformational solo road trip and I'm here to help you with every step so I have created resources specifically for the navigation chapter in the book it's a lot of links and examples of places where you can get navigational tools and apps for your phone that I suggest and all the things that will make your trip easier in terms of the navigating. I'm really excited for you to come along on the Summer of Wonder tour, whether you're attending a live event or listening to a podcast, watching the videos every week, reading my blog, whatever it is. It's such a blessing to have you along with Lexi and I as we explore explore our country and seek freedom and wonder in the creation that God has blessed us with. And please hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss any of it and that's the best way to stay informed. We love having you along for the ride. See you on the road.